Hey guys, in this video we'll cover understanding edge loops. Quick reminder, this lesson is from our complete intro to Blender course that we're offering for free for a limited time on YouTube. If you're new here, I'd recommend starting at the beginning of the course. I've added a link in the description. All right, go ahead and open up Blender and let's jump right in. To begin this lesson, let's start a new file. So go up to your file menu option and pick new, general, and you don't need to save what you are working on. In the new file, you start with the default cube, and we wanna add a second cube for this lesson. So first, let's move this cube over, press G for grab, and just move it over to the side a little bit and click to set it down. Then let's add a new cube, so Shift A for your add menu, go up to the mesh menu option, and then over on the side, pick cube. And just to give ourselves a little room here, press G, and let's move that over a little bit this way and click to set it down. Now with that cube selected on the right, go ahead and press the tab key so that you're in edit mode for that cube. In this lesson, we're gonna talk about edge loops. But in order to talk about edge loops, we're gonna need to subdivide our geometry here a little bit. So with this whole cube selected, right click on it and pick the option for subdivide and it will subdivide the cube around every face. Then go ahead and click once in space so we've been talking about subdivision and how ultimately the reason to subdivide something is so that you can then have extra geometry to modify the shape. So let's say we wanted to modify this cube. So I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in and pan over. So get yourself a closer view. And let's say where this edge across the top and this edge down here and the two that we don't see coming around, let's say we wanted to select all four of those connected edges and then manipulate them. So those four connected edges that wrap around this cube, that's what's known as an edge loop. Also, these four edges defining this rectangle here would be an edge loop, or these four around the mid line here, all the way around, those would be an edge loop. So let's say we wanna select this edge loop here. Let's go ahead and press two to switch to edge selection mode, and then click once on this top edge, hold down the shift key, Click that back one as well. And with the shift key held down, we're gonna keep clicking around. So pick this one here, this one here. Keep that shift key held down, orbit underneath. Click here, click here. Shift key is still held down, orbiting around the back. Click on this one here and this one here. And now we've selected all of those connected edges. Those are what would be known as an edge loop. And once you select an edge loop, you can start to manipulate the shape in some more predictable ways. So press S for the scale tool. And if you were to scale this up a bit and then click to set it down, you notice that you're scaling it in all four directions evenly. And so now you're making a more predictable edit to this entire shape. Okay, that's fine, but let's go ahead and discuss more about edge loops by working our way over to the other shape. So first, pan over, so hold down the shift key while pressing down in your center mouse wheel to move your view over. And then we need to press tab, that gets us back to object mode, so that then you can click on the other cube to select it, then press tab again, and now you've jumped into edit mode for that cube. Go ahead and roll your mouse wheel forward to zoom in a bit. With this cube, go ahead and click once off in space to deselect it. Let's review using the knife tool and let's think about how we're actually gonna be creating an edge loop using the knife tool. So press K to switch to the knife tool, and then somewhere across this top outside edge, go ahead and click once, and then move your mouse a little bit diagonally to this edge, click again, orbit while you're still in the middle of the knife tool, come down to this edge somewhere, click again, orbit again, you're still in the middle of the knife tool, let's go ahead and click across to this edge, click, and then orbit around and your final click should be back up to the original point here, click. And then to make sure this takes, go ahead and press the enter key on your keyboard. You've used the knife tool to subdivide those edges and in the process also the faces around all the sides there. Hey everyone, we're doing something a little unconventional here. And for a limited time, we're giving you access to one of our paid courses for free right here on YouTube. And this lesson is a part of it. Blender is a beast of a program to learn but with the right approach, it doesn't have to be. That's why we created Blender Academy, to help people build the Blender skills they need and then go out and get the jobs they want. We hope you find these lessons to be a good investment of your time. 
If you do, and you're serious about learning Blender, head over to our website and continue learning with us. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe. And now, back to the lesson. Okay, now all of those edges are selected right now, but let's just pretend that we went off and did something else, and then we needed to come back to edit this edge loop. So click once in space to deselect everything. And now we think to ourselves, let's pick that edge loop and then edit it in some way. And it would be really tedious to do what we did on the last one, to select all of the edges around an edge loop, especially when you get to more complicated geometry where you would have to select 20 or 40 or more edges. So there's a faster way to do this. Hold down the Alt key on your keyboard if you're on a PC, and it's the Option key if you're on a Mac, and then click once on an edge, and you will select that edge, but then it will also select the edge loop if there's an edge loop associated with it. And when I say associated with it, I mean if there's an edge loop that runs all the way around as this one does here. So you see those three other selected edges are orange and the one you clicked on is white. So all four have been selected. So again, the shortcut there to select an edge loop is to hold down the Alt key on a PC or the Option key on a Mac. And then while in edge selection mode to click on it to select it. So we have that edge loop selected. Now go ahead and press S for the scale tool and you could scale this up a bit and then click to set it down. And we saw this last time, but because it's the knife tool, we can do something that's a little bit off kilter there, which might be kind of cool instead of doing something that's very uniform. Just depends on the modeling challenge you have. Okay, so that's great. Now let's say that we wanted to edit some other edge loop here. So let's try picking an edge loop with this edge over here. So what I'm picking is we have this edge loop selected, but instead let's pick one of these edges here across the top. And by pick one of these edges, I mean, make sure you're in edge selection mode. So that's two on your keyboard. You should still be in it, but just in case. And then on a PC, hold down the alt key on a Mac, hold down the option key and click once on this edge to select it. And you'll see that you selected that edge and you selected this edge next to it, but then I don't see any other edges selected here. And sure enough, if you press something like S for the scale tool, you'll see you're really only manipulating those two edges. So you can hit escape to let that go. So when you click to select an edge loop, the way Blender figures that out is it says, okay, I know you wanna select this edge because you picked it. Now, when it hits this vertex, if this vertex has four edges attached to it, then I know to keep following the middle edge. So four edges means the original edge here, these two here, and this one here. So this vertex has four edges meeting at it, and it knows to follow the middle one. When it gets here, it says, okay, this vertex has three edges, this one here, this one here, and the one it came from. It doesn't know whether to hang a right or hang a left here, so it just stops. So whenever you go to select an edge loop, if it hits at a point where there are four edges coming from that vertex, then it will know what to do. And when it hits a point where there are not four edges, it won't know which path you want to take. So in this case, let's say that we mentally thought of this top as some sort of edge loop. Now, this wouldn't technically be one in Blender terminology, but if we thought, hey, I want to edit these edges that are around the perimeter here, we would just have to go and manually select the rest. So by holding down the shift key, clicking on each edge. So go ahead and do this. Hold down the shift key and click around each of these edges here. And then you could do something like press the R key for rotate and then rotate it a bit and then click to set that down. So just so that you know, when you click to select an edge loop, if it seems to have not gotten all the way around, there was a reason why it didn't know which edge loop to choose. Now, let's go ahead and press the tab key to go back to object mode. Zoom back a bit so you can see the other object. Click on it to select it, and then press the tab key to jump into edit mode. Then roll your mouse wheel forward and pan your view over to get closer to that object. So let's practice picking edge loops on this object. Go ahead and press the Alt key on a PC or the Option key on a Mac, and then with edge selection mode on, go ahead and click on this edge here and you'll get the edge loop around that. Press S for the scale tool. You can scale it in a bit and click to set it down. Then let's try getting the one around the middle here. So hold down that alt key on a PC or the option key on a Mac and click on this one. 
and then you can press S and you can scale that one in. So you see that you can get these edge loops and you might wonder, well, why is this one so easy to select edge loops? Because we subdivided this together, these edge loops that go around and divide the object this way, this way, and this way, they were always gonna be connected around such that every vertex was shared by four edges. Because the knife tool, we only really created one true edge loop here, it was gonna create the issues that we ran into. And I did that on purpose just so we could see the difference. Now, we can select edge loops quickly this way. And another thing that we can do is we can select face loops. So press three to switch to face selection mode. And then I want you to orbit so that you're looking at this. And remember, this was a cube, so it's a new kind of a shape, but pretend we're still roughly looking at a cube here. One of the top left corner faces here, I want you to move your cursor closer to the edge, but it's still on the face. And then it's just like picking an edge loop. You hold down the Alt key on a PC or the Option key on a Mac and click once on the face and it will select the face loop, which is the loop of faces going around. And of course, you could do something like press S for the scale tool and scale all of those faces at the same time and then click to set it down. Now, the reason I had us hover over near this edge, notice the difference. So we have this face loop selected, only this time, I want you to move your cursor near the top edge, still on the face, but near the top edge, hold down the Alt key on a PC or the Option key on a Mac and click once and notice that it switches to selecting this face loop. So now we've got these faces selected around all sides, which means you can press the scale tool and change that side and then click to set it down. So when you have face selection mode on, and that's what happened when we press the number three, and then you hold down the Alt key on a PC or the Option key on a Mac, it depends on what edge you're near so if you're near one of these two vertical edges, so I'm gonna click, it says, oh, got it. That's telling me you want me to go around this way. And if you're near one of these two horizontal edges, like here, I'm gonna click, and it says, oh, got it. You're trying to actually pick the face loop in this direction. So it matters where you're hovering on the face, anything a little bit more to the right or left, and it will follow that horizontal face loop. And anywhere near the top or the bottom, vertically here, and it'll say, oh, got it. We want this kind of vertical face loop. Okay, so in general, we've been introduced to the concept of edge loops. We can create those edge loops by either using the subdivide command or the knife tool, or as you'll see, edge loops can appear in other cases. And once we can select edge loops or face loops, we can more easily manipulate the shapes into the types of objects we need. Now, that being said, there are a few other tools related to edge loops that we're ready to move on and cover in the next lesson. Congratulations, you made it through the lesson. Did you find this video to be helpful? Let us know by giving it a like. If you're ready for the next lesson, you can find it in this playlist. And if you're interested in learning more about how we can help you build the skills you need, head over to blenderacademy.com. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. And until next time, happy blending.